Hello aviators, welcome to my instrument rating video series. I'm Ty Jones, your error nerd, bringing you honest experience, reviews, training tips that will help you aviate, navigate, and communicate. Now, if you're new here, the purpose of this video series is to bring you free, in-depth instrument ground school training for you instrument pilots. This is the same exact training and instructions that I normally give to my students. And if you're one of my students that are watching, yes, you can use this as a review because this is literally the same exact instructions that I give in the same exact way. Um, and it has been proven to work. So without further ado, let's jump right into the training. Okay, so holdings. How do you enter a hold? How many of you do this? Okay, uh, it's put my right, pen method, the pen method, no, no, okay, so it's, oh, uh, there we go, so, uh, parallel, that's right, right? No, stop, I mean, this would, I mean, this, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this, actually, there is a lot of things wrong with this. Parallel entry, hey, you're absolutely correct, now fly it, oh, shoot. Yes, see, I see this all the time. Hey, instrument pilots, welcome back. This is episode number nine, and this one we're gonna be talking about holds and holding patterns. Why we do holds, what's the reasoning behind it? I did wanna shoot this one yesterday. I do apologize for the delay in advance, but I have been feeling a little bit underneath the weather lately. No, I do not have the coronavirus. I mean, geez, you go outside and you if you even sneeze or sniff, So what is the purpose of holds? Why do we do it? Well, let's say that if somebody's coming in on an airport and you have to hold, you have to stand by, maybe there's something happened on the runway and you have to hold in the air. Well, holding literally is a racetrack pattern in the air. You sit there and you orbit up in the air over a certain fix that they tell you, whether if it's approach or, or any kind of center that they tell you to hold, and then when you're when you're able to continue, and then they will let you proceed. Uh, so let's say you're here, you're at this, at this fix, you're going to, you're going to this fix right here. But right here, they're super busy and they need you to hold over this fix so what will happen is you'll end up going this way and you'll come over here and most likely they'll ask you to hold at this fix so what you'll do is you'll sit there and you'll hold and you'll hold and you'll hold until when they tell you to proceed or when you are ready then you can go ahead and proceed direct to the fix the airport the initial approach fix the final approach fix if you're being vectored or or whatever the case may be now there are two types of holds there's distance holds and there's timed holds so timed holds is normally around one minute or two minutes or whatnot they will let you know if it is published so if you're going to fly as hold as published then you're going to be holding as what is published on the approach plate or on the chart or whatever you're flying. Let's say if you're going over to the, um, the stars, the standard arrivals. And if you missed that episode, I'll go ahead and put a link up there so you can see that. That's the last episode that I posted so you know a little bit more about stars. So let's say you're on a star and you're saying, remember what I was saying in the last video, a star is normally the off ramp from the highway, the off ramp from your uh, from your IFR flight plane and getting ready to get yourself lined in, get you ready to, to funnel in to your initial approach fix, to your approach. So here's your IFR flight plan and now you're going into the star and then this may be your initial fix right here and then from there you'll go into the, so this right here is your, is your star. Um, pretty much in a nutshell. So for holds, I would always want you to know where to reference this material from. And if you look in the AIM 538, that's where you're going to find all of the information. In case I missed anything, you can, actually, you can definitely go back and search there. Now there's three types of, of hold entry procedures, but before we get into this, let's actually break down the actually racetrack pattern itself. Now, here's going to be your fix right here. This is going to be that, that one area that one fix that you're going to have to use as a reference point to start your entry procedure uh, or, or start the holding procedure 
So there is a protected side and there's a non-protected side. The protected side or the holding side is going to be this side right here. This is going to be your where you're going to find your outbound leg. Whichever side your outbound leg is, that's going to be your holding side. Now your inbound or your coarse leg, that is going to be the, the fine line between the non-protected and the protected side. The standard pattern is going to be right turns. Unlike your traffic pattern entry, the standard traffic pattern is the left. Uh, for the holdings, is always going to be to the right. It's kind of opposite. Why do they do that? Just to confuse you, I guess. I don't know. But the standard is going to be right turn. So if the approach gives you a, gives you a holding direction and they don't tell you left or right turns, you can automatically assume that it's going to be right turns. So this is the unprotected side right here. I kind of illustrated that by drawing these little mountains right here. I don't know if you can see them, but these are the little mountains right here. So this is why it's going to be at this fix right here. They're going to have you do right turns. This is the standard uh, standard. Now it can't be. Now it may not just be mountains. It can be for perhaps maybe they have an antenna over there or maybe it's a noise abatement area or whatnot. Uh, or maybe they just want you to be on pulling on this side. Normally when you are a beam of your fix right here, uh, if it's a time turn, that's when you would actually start your timer. So when you are right here at a beam, and we'll do this in the G1000 uh, here, but here shortly, uh, to show you what I mean here, when you actually start your timer, um, and then you're going to go on the outbound leg for your for your specified time or, or your specified distance. Uh, let's say let's keep it simple right here. So let's do it timed. So we're going to do one minute legs. One minute legs. Now the most important thing here is your time leg on your inbound course on your inbound. So let's say the winds are calm, and if you start here and you're going to go right here one minute then you're going to start your standard right turn right here when you are lined up on that on that uh, inbound course you're going to start your timer right here and if everything in a, in, a, in a perfect world with no winds are going on when you are right over your fix you should all you should also be at one minute however there's winds right so if we have winds going in this way obviously you're going to have a headwind because you're going to be flying in this way. So if you're flying in here about one minute and you have a lot of headwinds, obviously it's going to be, you're going to be going a lot slower, right? So if you are, if you're at one minute and you're going slower, you're actually going to start turning inbound a little bit earlier than expected. And then when you are going in the inbound and now you time, now you start your timer, the wind's still pushing you that way. So by the time you hit your one minute, because you have a tail when you're traveling faster, you might overshoot your fix and then your one minute might be here instead. So pay attention, pay specifically attention to your winds. If you have a 10 knot wind, for example, and you're going over the fix, you over your fix, you start your standard rate turn, you start your timer, you're being your fix, you're starting your timer. Now, since you have a headwind, you're not going to time one minute because the objective is to have this inbound course from here to here one minute leg. So how are we going to get that with a headwind? We're not going to go one minute. We're actually going to go maybe, let's say, a minute and 20 seconds or, or whatnot. So let's go out here a minute. So here's a minute right here, right? Because we're going because we're going slower. But let's go ahead and extend that for a minute and 25. Ah, now when we start turning, and we're aligned here. Now we start our timer, and now we're going to actually go over there, go over the fix at one minute. Now that's the objective, and vice versa. If we have a, let's say we have a, a tailwind coming around. Now obviously when we're going this way, we're going to be going a lot slower, right? Really, 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 really slow. We do our, we're over the fix. We do our standard rate turn. Now it's really pushing us out faster. So are we gonna time this for one minute or is it gonna be less than one minute? Obviously it's going to be less than one minute. So if we're over the fix, we're going down, we're going down, let's say we're only gonna do for 50 seconds. 50 seconds right here. Now we're gonna do our turn and we're going a little bit slower, but once we hit our timer, we should definitely be over this fix exactly at one minute. So this outbound leg is gonna be adjusted according to the winds. Now the other one to alleviate that whole 
oh, I gotta adjust for the winds and I gotta do all this, I gotta time it to, to alleviate that whole problem, they have what's called a distance hold. So if one hold, let's say, is four nautical miles, once you're beam the fix, regardless of what the winds are doing, you're flying out for four nautical miles and then you make your standard rate turn. Simple. Okay, now let's get into entries now. How do we enter this fix or enter this holding pattern? Now in a perfect world, we would always be lined up right here, entering right into the hold perfectly and then we just start our hold, start our hold, and then once we're done, then we can just keep on going over, right? However, sometimes we're coming over from this direction. Sometimes we're coming from this direction or sometimes we're coming from this direction and sometimes we could be coming from this direction. So this is literally a top down view and I do the northeast, southwest uh, so you can kind of see where we're coming from here. So if we are coming from, again, it, the, it's, we're going this way. This is the direction of the racetrack holding pattern. We're flying directly to the fix. As I said earlier, this is where the fix starts. This is where the holding pattern starts. So if we're coming from here, then we're going to fly directly to the fix, and then we can just turn to the right and then just keep on uh, continuing on with the holding pattern. If we're flying directly from here, we can just fly directly to the fix. If we're flying from here, or here, or here, we can just fly directly toward the fix. That's why it's called direct, because you're just flying directly toward it. However, let's say we're coming from over here. We're coming from over here. We can fly directly to the fix because that's actually what we're doing. But once we get here, our plane is actually facing the wrong way. It's going this way, but we got to go this way. So how, what are we going to do to flip around and go this way? So we're going to go down this way. We kind of don't want to go this way too much because again, this is the unprotected side. This is the danger zone. This is the, where all the mountains are at. This is the noise abatement. So we can't really go too far this way. So once we're over the fix, I guess we can just do a loop-de-loop -loop like this, I guess, and then go back around like this and then go, what, what is, well, how do we do this? This is the reason why we have different procedures uh, for parallel and teardrop. So with this being said, since we're coming from here, we're gonna actually do our parallel, uh, parallel entry. So what this is, is we're gonna be coming down directly to our fix. And then once we're over our fix, now we're going to fly the radial from that fix away for at least one minute. Once we get that one minute, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn around away from the protected side, all the way around, rejoin the course leg, and then we're gonna apply it toward the fix. So once you're over the fix, then we start the holding pattern just as normal. So we're gonna review, so here's where we're coming at. We're coming from the Northwest right here. We're flying directly to our fix. Once we're over our fix, then we're gonna join the, the radial for one minute. Once we have our one minute, then we're gonna circle around here, circle, and this is all standard rate turns, by the way. Once we're re-intercepted with this line, then we rejoin the course to our fix. Once we're here, then that's where the normal holding uh, holding pattern procedure starts. Okay, so now it's going over to teardrop. I kind of changed the colors here so you can see. So here's a parallel. Now it's going to a teardrop. Now teardrop is one of my favorites. So a teardrop, we're coming from anywhere from this direction. Now again, for, par for direct, it could be from anywhere in this region, right? Because you don't really need to do any kind of U-turns or anything. From parallel, you can come from anywhere in this region because it's, it's, you're literally coming in the same. So if you're coming from here, it's the same exact thing and then you're doing your, your procedure turn and then you're rejoining. Now, if you're coming from this direction, so here's teardrop right here, we're coming into the fix, directly to the fix. Now, again, our airplane needs to go that way but we're facing this way, so how do we turn? What, what do we do? So in this case, we continue over the fix and then we turn about, so we enter this at, at, at a 30 degree angle. So this right here is about to be a 30 degree angle from your inbound course uh, angle. So you're gonna fly it right out here, 30 degrees for about one minute. And then once you're about your one minute, you're literally doing the same thing here. You're doing a U-turn. Do a nice standard rate U-turn and you're coming all the way back around. Once you re-intercept that course inbound, 
you re-intercept it, you come, once you're about over the fix, then you start your holding pattern just as normal. Okay, so just to review what we went over, just wanna make sure this actually hit home. So we're gonna do one example for each. So let's start with direct. So direct is anywhere, if we're coming from here, 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 how are we gonna enter this hold? We're gonna apply directly toward the fix. This little X is right here. These are your fixes. Here's the fix, here's the fix, and here's your fix. Uh, so here we go. We're, let's say we're coming from here, I guess. So we're coming from here, we're gonna fly directly toward the fix, direct. And boom, we're there. Now what do we do? We're gonna start our standard rate right turn. Once we're a beam, the fix, that's when we're gonna start our timer or we're gonna fly out to the distance if it's a distance hold. So that is direct. Let's say we're flying from here, from this direction or this direction. Let's say, let's say we're flying from here. So we're flying from here. How do we enter this holding pattern? Again, we, we, it's still going the same right turn patterns, but we're coming from way over here. So we gotta do some kind of U-turn, right? So we're coming directly toward the fix. Once we're over the fix, now we're gonna fly parallel for about one minute. And then we're gonna do our U-turn, re-intercept the inbound course, and then keep flying. Now once we're over our fix, then we start the holding pattern. Okay, so teardrop, we're coming in, we're coming inbound, let's say we're coming in from this direction, we're coming in as soon as we're over the fix, we turn so we are 30 degrees from our inbound leg, and once we're about one minute, we start our standard right turn all the way in, re-intercept the inbound course, keep flying in, flying in, flying in, once you're over the fix, then you start your holding pattern as uh, as published. Now another thing that you have to be careful of is when you're doing these U-turns, pay attention to the winds because sometimes you're not going to be able to do this at a standard right turn. If the winds are blowing you, let's say if the winds are blowing this way, then obviously the winds are going to be pushing you way out here in your standard right turn and then by the time you re-intercept your fix you can be like right there over the fix. So you definitely want to make it so it looks more so like this as possible. Especially when you are doing your teardrop entry turn, when you're going up here, let's say the winds are pushing you uh, this way. So the winds are pushing this way, you're out here, you're going 30, 30, 30 degrees from your from your inbound course, and then you're going out, now you do your standard rate turn and what, look what that wind's gonna do to you. It's gonna push you all in the unprotected side. So be careful with that, that's definitely a, uh, check ride issue that I have experienced a lot of students uh, end up doing. So watch your bank angle if there is uh, a lot of winds out there. So don't go into the unprotected side, the is what I call the danger zone. Stay away from the danger zone. Another thing that can really help you enter the teardrop is to remember the acronym LARS, left, add, right, subtract. So here's your LARS right here. So left, add, right, subtract. What does this even mean? So let's say your pattern is going to be a standard pattern, so it's gonna be right. So when you are going to, when your pattern is a right standard pattern, and let's say we're coming on, coming on here, or this direction, or this direction, doesn't matter. What you wanna do is as soon as you get the radio that you're gonna be holding on, let's say for our instance, ours is gonna be on, the, on a zero, nine, or zero radial, so this outbound leg, and that's how you can make sense of what the holding direction is. But this is actually on the zero, nine, or zero radial on this fix. So we're going to tune into our little CDI, uh, zero, nine, or zero, and we're going to subtract uh, 30 from the fix in order to, so, so we can get that 30 degree angle from our uh, from our inbound leg as we were saying earlier. How does this make sense? Here's our right track pattern. Here's our right standard pattern. We're coming from this way, this way, this way, it doesn't matter, anywhere in this range right here. This, once we're over the fix, then we're going to subtract 30. Now subtracting 30 is on the heading indicator, so this is north up here. So if we go to 90, we're gonna subtract 30. So 90, 80, 70, 60. This is the course we're gonna be flying to after we hit that fix. That'll give us that perfect 30 degree angle 
that the teardrop entry requires. Now let's say we have a left turn. Same thing applies. Let's say we're coming from here, coming from here, coming from here. We know we have to do a teardrop entry. Now, now that it's a left, we have to add 30 from our radial. So we have 90. So we want to have that nice 30 degree angle from our inbound course. So in order to do that, we have to add 30. So 90, 100, 110, 120. Nice 30 degree angle from our inbound course. So if we're coming from here, then we know as soon as we're over our fix, we have to turn to heading 120. Now sometimes you may already be at 120, which is completely fine. But let's say if you're at 110 or you're at, um, I don't know, 110 uh, one or something like that. Once you're over the fix, then you know to turn to heading 120 for one minute. And then you're going to fly and then you're going to intercept your inbound course to your fix. Once you're over your fix, then you proceed uh, as normal. Okay, for example, so for a holding pattern, you may hear something like this. Session November 777 Hotel Echo hold southeast of the... Stop right there. Just stop right there. Hold southeast. Southeast. So you know you're going to be holding somewhere in this region over here, right? So let's just go ahead and just, yeah, doesn't apply to us because we're holding southeast. So boom, done, okay? So let's go ahead and continue. Hold southeast over the 150 radial. Now what you can do, the center of your heading indicator or your HSI, you're going to have this, it's normally your little airplane right here, but this airplane is now your fix. That's your fix. So 150 radial, that means you're coming from the 150. So let's say 150, what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a line from 150, you're gonna draw that straight toward the fix. Boom, right there, all right? Now, they never said any any kind of left turn or right turn, so we gotta automatically assume that it's that it's right turns, right? So when you're coming from that right from radial 150, 150, draw that nice right turn, standard right turn on your H side. You can actually visualize this, and you're coming down, and then you're here, and then boom. Okay, so let's go ahead and erase this. So now we can actually visualize our racetrack pattern right there on the HSI. Now we're always going to be flying straight up, right? So our HSI is always going to be facing straight up, we're always facing this way. So we're going to end up going over the fix. What kind of entry do you think we're going to be doing? We're not going to have to do any kind of U-turns because we're already going right in, right in the same direction. So it's going to be a direct entry, bam, right there. Notice we didn't do any of this or pen method and what? All right, let's try another one. So we're coming up. Now we're flying at an easterly heading and 777 Hotel Echo hold northeast of the, stop right there, hold northeast. So we know that we're gonna be holding in this sector right here somewhere. So erase all of this, it doesn't, doesn't matter. So hold northeast over the 030 radio. So 030, it's about right here. So 030, draw a line straight from here because this is where we're gonna be coming from, right there, right to the dot. Now, they didn't say left or right turn, so we automatically assume that it's right turns. I'm coming from here, coming from this direction. Which way is right? Obviously, it's gonna be this way. So right turns, so you can draw out your, your racetrack pattern right there, and boom. There's your beam. So there's your racetrack pattern right there. Now, we can get rid of this, because we already know where we're coming from there. Now again, we're always flying to the fix from the bottom up. So if this is our fix right in the center, where, what kind of entry would we have to do? Flying to the fix, now what? We gotta do some kind of U-turn, right? We're gonna have to do a parallel. If you mentioned parallel, you're absolutely correct. So we're gonna come in this way, come in this way, come in this way, and fly this way for one minute. And then we're gonna do our U-turn, re-intercept the inbound course to the fix, and then we're gonna start our, our uh, racetrack pattern, our holding pattern. Now, another question, another pop quiz is, which is the protected side and the unprotected side? If you answered this is the danger zone, you're absolutely correct. Why? would this be the unprotected side? 
Well, because they have you holding over here, they're not gonna have you hold in the mountains, right? Or in the danger zone or in the noise abatement area. So the holding side is always gonna be your protected side. So when you're doing your maneuvers and when you're trying to intercept, just be careful. Try not to be too far over on this side of the radio once you're doing your winter procedure turn. Okay, so now I'm gonna throw in a curveball to see if everybody's staying with me here. So November 777 Hotel Echo, we are holding southeast. Stop right there. Southeast, we're holding over here. We're doing something over here. So just erase all of this. Just don't even confuse it. Just, just take it away. Uh, one of the 120 radial left turns. So 120 radio, where is 120? This is gonna be the 120 right here. So we're gonna be drawing a line from 120 all the way to the center. Now we're doing left turns, right? So we're not going to the right, we're going to the left. So the same thing as before, we're doing our racetrack bed onto the left and we're coming back around this way. And now we are flying to the fix from the bottom up all the time. So when we do our fix, what kind of entry are we going to have to do? Now, if you said teardrop, you're absolutely correct. This is where we can apply our Lars method, right? So just to review, Lars, we got left, add, right, subtract. So since we have left, we have to add 30 to our 120. So 120 plus 30 is gonna be 150. So once we're over that fix, we're gonna be flying heading 150. So we're flying, we're flying, we're flying, whatever heading that this is, who knows? And then once we're over this fix, then we're going to turn to 150. I don't know if you can see that. We're gonna fly this heading for, actually this is 150 right here. There we go. 150 for uh, one minute, and then we're going to intersect our inbound course, and then we're gonna join the holding pattern as so. Now, the rest of the instructions is mainly the same. Uh, they're gonna either tell you one minute legs or distant legs, um, advise when ready to leave the hold or, or whatever. Uh, so that's literally how all of this uh, works. And lastly, before we get on the G1000, these are also uh, airspeed limitations. We never really have to worry about this for general aviation or, uh, or Cessnas, but just in case they ask you again, you can find this, uh, the reference at 538. But if you're below 6,000 feet, the maximum speed for holding is gonna be 200 knots. Now, if you're in between, so I drew these lines here, um, so this is, so it's in between uh, 6,001 feet and 14,000 feet, you can only go 230 knots. Now, once you're above, so this little line right here, so anything above 14,001 feet all the way up, then your limitation is 265 knots. Okay, so here I am going to Orm, and I'm gonna try to hold this as steady as possible. Um, this is the um, G1000 iPad app that I highly recommend. Um, if you have two iPads, you can actually um, link them together and I have this going off of uh, X-Plane right now. Here's my X-Plane. So um, So this is something I definitely highly recommend you use to chair fly to definitely keep current with uh, with the instrument if you can uh, But as you can see right now, I'm flying toward Orman about uh, 3.7 miles away and I am cheating. I am, I am on autopilot. Don't judge me But I am trying to fly and hold the camera at the same time. So uh, anyway moving along uh, so let's say I'm I get directions by and, I, and they tell me hold on the hold southwest stop right there southwest on you know i'm going to do something over here uh in this little sector right here hold southwest on the 210 radio so i'm going to go ahead and pause it right here okay so maybe i can't pause i don't know how to do it and explain yet so i'm just going to uh do this best i can so i'm going to move this at the 210 move the course now to 210 uh let's see 210 there it is right there and again starting from the course right there 210 go inbound they didn't say left or right so i'm assuming i'm going to do right turns and you can see the racetrack pattern right there so what kind of turn what kind of entry do you think i'm going to be doing if you said teardrop you're absolutely correct so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take off my heading and i'm going to do since it's right turns right subtract right so i subtract 30 from 210 so i'm going to move my heading bug to 180 there it is 180 
there's 30 degrees so I'm 1.5 about 1.6 miles away so I did my large already applied so 210 minus 30 that's gonna be 180 so as soon as I'm over my fix I'm going to turn to a heading of 180 all right again I got my timer out there so I'm gonna to turn to that heading for approximately one minute now my unprotected side is going to be on this side right here right the northwestern area so I definitely want to stay on that side so I'll show you what this looks like all right now I'm going to turn on my heading all right so now I'm turning to my heading I'm gonna go ahead and start my timer come on start there we go so one minute and there we go so now I'm on that 30 degree angle from my course inbound and I'm gonna do this for about one minute I'm gonna fast forward this a little bit so you don't have to watch this whole thing all right five seconds left what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna turn my autopilot off and I'm gonna try to do this manually while I'm holding the camera so let me see if I can do this so one minute I'm gonna do my standard right turn to inbound because it's right turn so I'm going to start my nice standard rate and I'm gonna try to keep that magenta right on that nice standard rate turn right there so any time now I should see it so there it is right there I'm gonna keep on turning I'm gonna turn a little bit more sharper because I do not want to go onto the unprotected side right so all right so now I can shallow it out just a bit I could show it out very very nice cool so as you can see I'm still on the protected side of the hold and I can see Ormond down there on this nice uh, this is crazy with the synthetic vision there all right and there it is so let me roll out here oh my gosh oh oh me I'm trying to multitask here holding the camera and all right so let me get back to my heading here now as you can see the closer you get um, it is going to get super more and more sensitive once you're in within 0.3 don't don't try to chase the cdi just just stay the same heading and now once my once it, once it flips to the from this is where i start my to my standard rate turn to my radial this is where I'm turning the one, or a correction, the 210 radial as I was originally instructed. All right, now, now that I am on my 210 heading, I'm going to stay at this heading. And as you can see, my two is pointing to the VOR. It's always pointing right there. So when that is, when that lines up with these little bubbles, these bubbles are always going to be perpendicular to your heading. So when that is, when I'm a beam, that is when I'm gonna start my timer. So right about now, I'll go ahead and start it. Come on, start, there we go. It's starting and I'm gonna fly out here for one minute depending on the wind. So as you can see, I have a one knot tailwind. So I can probably fly out here for let's say, I don't know, 58 seconds. Uh, and then when I go back inbound, I'm gonna have a slight headwind and by that time by by the time i reach my fix i should be uh, right over it at one minute so all right so that's literally it i'm pretty sure you get the point um if you have any questions uh, just leave them in the comments below